Hey Legionnaires and welcome back, we're here in the world of Middle Earth once again and we have another glorious siege battle for you today as we have a 3v3 here as we have Mordor defending uh, the Rohirrim stronghold here and uh, yes it's going to be a very tough one. I've honestly just saw almost Edoras, that's what it's called. I was like I've forgotten what the name of the city is called but it's just Edoras. Yeah, for some reason in this cursed world Mordor has occupied Edoras and is now defending it and alongside them here today we do have the Elves of Lothlorien. What are they doing changing sides? They are here as well, uh, Lothlorien and I think the final enemy if I'm correct is the um, is Isengard, yeah, over here. We have Urukai infantry ready. So I guess maybe the Uruks took it, and um, maybe um, they, uh, you know, Lothlorien chain sides at Helm's Deep, and then also Mordor is, you know, is here for the for the ride. But yeah, so the Uruks are now defending what they have taken and trying to reclaim it. We do have the Goblins. We have over on the far side, we have another Mordor, and then we have a Gondor army here as well. So a very strange trio on either side in this one. Not a very law-friendly battle, but it certainly is spicing itself up to be a very, very exciting one here. We are just using the base mods. There's no last breath or anything else being used. Um, so yeah, just a nice classic vanilla um, Dawnless Days sort of battle for you. That, and it should certainly be a glorious one. We already have some archer fire taking place here. We have some Urukai archers. Look like they're trying to duel with uh, Goblin Heavy Archers down there. Goblin Heavy Archers are really focusing down these Urukai Pikes, trying to weaken them before the bloody assault begins. But yes, it does seem as though um, the Uruks are going to be the first on the front line. The barricade's been burned here. I've never seen this being done, but it's actually not a bad idea. It might be a quick way to get rid of them. They take ages to destroy, usually, um, with like infantry. So actually burning them might be a lot quicker. And it looks like that is the case. Um, so that is certainly very, very interesting. But yes, if you're enjoying all things Lord of the Rings, I would like to see some more Lord of the Rings on the channel. If you're enjoying these sort of like siege battles, do remember to leave a like. Subscribe if you're new around here and come to show support. It really does help out the channel. And we've got some trolls going in first here. As we were, um, but yeah, we're working towards 8k, not 8k, 10k subs. We are way past 8k. We're working towards 10k subs. So if you want to, you know, help us get there and you haven't already subscribed, you know what to do. Yeah, mountain trolls going in first. Um, I thought maybe these guys at all were going to stay at 10, but they actually are not. They are down to 8 as well, 8 out of 8. I thought maybe the Olokai were just going to stay at... Go down to 8 and the mountain trolls would stay at 10. Is that weaker? But maybe mountain trolls have been um, buffed as well. We'll see. We'll see in this uh, siege battle. I don't think I've actually seen mountain trolls yet really in the game um, since we've had like the update. Um, yeah, Olokai are down to 8. Um, they are elite. I would have thought maybe because... Um, Mountain Trolls are trained. They would have maybe made them a little bit more numerous. But maybe maybe they've been uh, buffed. We'll see. Good hit there on those Uruk Throngers. That's spicing up a few uh, Mordor Orcs. I mean, I would have thought that, you know, love fire. They're kind of born in fire. But, you know, apparently not. They burn just fine. Got Mordor Orcs here. Loaned from Mordor to, uh, to the Goblins. And they are about to make their assault, uh, it seems, through that gate there. Um, we're seeing archers, Uruka, archers here starting to get focused on. I imagine by Lothlorien. Yeah, Lorien sentries here. Look like they're burning through their ammo, though, to be fair. Uh, taking out some um, some of these orc archers. So, yeah, that is, that is something. It looks fallen. like um, this Mordor, the attacking Mordor, is going to have the toughest fight, as I imagine, because they're facing off against the Galadrim elves of Lothlorien. But we will see. Uh, because, you know, elves are pretty uh, pretty killable. All you got to do is just focus down their shock infantry. It makes it a lot easier. There you go. In go the uh, the elves. They are going to start slashing and beheading those orcs. There you go. The battle has got underway. Uh, on the other side here, the trolls have also got in. They are first in. This is a bold move here. Going in against the Uruks as well. Look at that backdrop. All the fire coming in. Trolls are being yeah thrown in first. Interesting move because that's when the enemy has the like the defenders have the most ammo. Like they, these guys are just gonna use as much ammo as possible to kill this very expensive unit and do as much damage to it. But in a sense, it also is soaking up a lot of ammo that uh, the defenders might need for later on in the game. But maybe it's a tactic. But yeah, or bow rabble and uh, Urukai archers they'll eventually get through these mountain trolls. I thought, but they are winning decisively as they beating up these uh, Urukai. Keep slapping them about, boys. Send those Uruks packing. Yeah, there you go. Keep 
keep whacking them with their tree trunk maces there. Uh, looks like, yeah, wow, look at this. They've really done a lot of damage to these Urukai infantry here and also the archers. They really did a number trying to make sure that this is just like a kill zone almost and the Uruks won't defend it. But look at the bodies. A lot of Uruks. A lot of ammo would have been used up there. Yeah, these goblin heavy archers are out of ammo already. That's actually kind of incredible. We've also got a trebuchet over here uh, for Gondor and that's using its ammo. It's getting through that slowly. I didn't even realize that it was uh, not a goblin artillery piece, but yeah, that's burning through. And we've also got Mordor Uruks here. They're trying to hack and slash through more Urukai uh, scouts down here. So these are the lesser quality infantry that the Ur Uruks can bring. Oh, I should say uh, Isengard to bring. There you go, they've won. A glorious victory there for the Goblins. Going to need many more if they want to win here today. Uh, how are these trolls doing? They are losing now, as I expected. They're just going to focus down. And they're already down to four out of six. They are getting beaten back. And yeah, I mean, the uh, Mordor here are going to be uh, a little too much for them, I think. And also, yeah, look at that. The uh, shocking drills are getting focused down. We can see Goblin Blade Warrior is going to replace them. But that is going to be a, a kill zone, really. I mean, there's like getting shot at by three different angles there from the defenders. That is brutal. Yeah, Bow Rabble, we've got. Uh, Urukai archers are all firing on from different walls. spots. It's brutal. Over here, looks the like the elves are doing peace. a good job defending against Uruk Spears here. Uh, has Gondor actually made its landing yet? They have. Gondor has made a. Oh, it's making Salidon, in fact. It's even worse from Gondor. They have not even made it to the walls. It's Pelican Marine Tick getting sallied out. It uh, looks like by. Yeah, off war, but not quality infantry at all. Yeah, they're being sliding out there, and we also got Warriors of Loznok being attacked by all pillagers. They get more levy infantry. Looks like they're being supported by archers. Um, I saw archer fire, yeah. Lorian sentries there, firing up the side, trying to do as much damage as possible. So whether this is just a delaying tactic, I don't know. We've got Galahorn, Galahorn archers here. They've been focused down, and they've got a lot of ammo left. We've got more Galician here and some Lorian sword coming in. It's very light defenses here, really. Um, but yeah, Gondor not really supporting his uh, infantry at all. He has cavalry, I can see, in the back of their arriving. But he needs to get a move here. The Knights of Gondor, we need you. Yeah, this replay was sent in by a member of my Discord. So if you want to send in any of your own replays from Golden State or any Total War, uh, for a matter of fact, whether it's a mod or whether it's vanilla, feel free to, feel free to send it into my uh, Discord. The link is down below in the description. As we have the Knights of Gondor arriving to crush the mortal Uruk. There you go. That will certainly help out that fight there. And there you go. Instantly, these Urukwong are losing. I mean, they probably were going to be tough to beat these Urukwong swords with uh, some triple bronze chevrons there. We've got Lorian sentries also now uh, firing point blank range, though, into the cavalry down there. So they're trying to do some damage to that, uh, their cavalry, but they're getting shot themselves by Gondor archers that are setting up. So, yeah, it's a, it's a risk by uh, having all their archers mounted here, that's for sure. And it actually seems like the Orc pillagers. The sally out has not worked in their favor as they're getting beaten by Warriors of Loznark. I mean, Warriors of Loznark aren't great, but they'll beat Levy Shock Infantry, that's for sure. Uh, certainly seems like uh, the, the worst attack at the moment is going over here. Um, just seems like uh, the attackers aren't really breaking through. This Uruk Throng is landing in a very strange formation, but this probably needs to be rectified here by the defenders. They're just allowing this to land. Here we go. Haldir with his Wardens of uh, Wardens of the Fences. Do they have a name now? Do they always have this name? I feel like they never did have this name. This is, yeah. Whether his unit's smaller as well, I don't know. Oh, yeah, and they're all... I forgot. Warrior Defenses, they're all Haldirs at the moment. I forgot that this is a bug. So, yeah, you just have, like, a whole unit full of Haldirs. Very scary stuff, really, um, to be honest. I don't know if I want to see 85 Haldirs, but there you go. That's what we have. But yeah, this is going to be the toughest sword defense here. Um, to, well, toughest attack facing off against the elves, but it uh, looks like they stacked up a lot here of Mordor to try and get their way through, and they're going to need it, that's for sure. Back on this other side here, the goblins still struggling, but they are slowly whittling down these Mordor defenders here. Sauron will be hating this, seeing so many orcs fighting each other. It's like, no, you're killing men. Go for the man flesh, not for the goblin flesh. Stinky flesh. I'd imagine it stinks. I don't know. Goblins, I feel like they do. I feel like it'd be very nice to eat their flesh. Now I sound like a cannibal saying that.
But the archer's coming in here, still making a bit of a kill zone. And we've got more trolls arriving. I thought we were going to hear the elephant sounds, which is how the trolls announce themselves. And they're trying to silence these archers, but they get themselves just point blank range right now. They do some cav or something coming up here to run down these archers. Um, because even though they might be tying down these ones, which is great, they are being shot by Orkbo Rebel here and also Urukai archers in the back. So yeah, these trolls just aren't really going to achieve too much. They are breaking through. The, the, um, the goblins have just broken through. They might be able to sign some more of them. And the trolls are pulling through, and that's fine. They're massive beasts. I feel like that's loud. They're taking on half orc axes here with uh, Isengard. I think they're going to try and maybe just run the whole way through and try and, I don't know, avoid getting shot at, but they have been stopped now by the half orc axes, it seems. And uh, we might see the goblins waste a lot of trolls here for very little game. So the early troll rush, will it work? I don't know. We'll see. Mountain trolls here yeah, winning decisively at the moment, but no surprise, they're running down like all bow rabble. Um, they haven't got any more trolls, and they have got a bunch more infantry and spear warriors and stuff like that to bring in. I don't know what the rules are, but they brought a lot of pole arms to the, uh, to the gobos, it seems. And uh, they're actually pushing on over here, Mordor Uruks as well, running into a bit of uh, trouble facing up against Isengard here in the back lines. They should win this, and Isengard might make a fresh sort of uh, counter-offensive to try and, you know, push back the goblins here. We'll see. Uh, it does seem as though, well, Florian as well is pushing back Gondor. Yeah, what is it? It's just Pelagia Marines, yeah. They're getting chopped up by Amaral Sentinels. Arguably, I still think one of the best um, cost-benefit uh, sort of you can get. I mean, no surprises an elf unit. They are solid. Uh, so Gondor's swords here waiting. Gondor's slow to bring any more reinforcements up. He's got more Pelagia Marines back here. He's got more Gondor swords. He's just letting his artillery do more damage. Um, he didn't bring any Fountain Guard either, which is interesting to see. Unless they're over on this side, which they possibly could be with Mordor. Yeah, it looks like he's just kind of gone with a lot of swords and archers. And he did bring that Cav, is which is pretty useful. Enemy. Which is now going in. It's going to try and run around and do some damage here to the Amaral Sentinels. It might just do that. Here we go. I think a charge is arriving. Brace, elves. There you go. In goes the Cav. I mean, I think it's a bit of a sacrificial use of the Cav at this point. They're not going to be able to break this unit, I'd imagine. And uh, by pulling out, they're going to do significant damage to this cavalry unit which is already pretty bad enough but Gondor just needs to get more infantry in here he's now slowly here we go three more units on the way I just throw the rest of the infantry and get the archers in as well just you know really try and force your way through because you're using the majority of your army against a small token force here and uh, it would really help to put pressure on this sector just to help out the goblins who as you can see yeah Isengard is doing a counter offensive now and the trolls are going in against each other Okay, we have troll v troll action. I'm not really sure how this is going to work, but Olakai are trying to silence the, uh, the mountain trolls. I imagine they will. And with the support of those half orc axes, I would have thought that would be pretty easy. And yeah, the mountain trolls, I don't know what they're going for. Got some heroes of Amon Lank here for them in square, trying to avoid something. It's the archers. They're really just trying to silence these archers. These orc bow rabble. I mean, it's not a bad idea, but probably cheaper ways to try and silence these archers than using mountain trolls. Yeah, the Olakai are in some sort of foot race now with their uh, troll brethren to try and silence them. That's quite funny. Mordor's still stuck here. The elves still holding the back. The Morgul Raiders being held back by tiny little units of Amor Sentinels and Gladril, Gladrim elves. Yeah, look at that Gladrim uh, sword warrior there. Six out of a hundred. Still holding. Incredible stuff. Really, some of the toughest elves around. Are they trying to batter the door down? The oh, they are. are yeah. So, the yeah. We have Uruk Throng here trying to destroy this gate. It's getting there, but it's not doing like a lot of damage. Did they not bring a ram? I don't think they did. I mean, I guess it's just they're trying to find another avenue through. But to be honest, the orcs uh, should nearly break through this. It doesn't look like Lothorian's wanting to commit more. In fact, he's pulling back Amor Sentinels as they're getting shot up quite a bit. Those trolls that pushed so deep into enemy territory, dead. As kind of expected. And uh, yeah, it looks like the goblins are being forced back towards the gate. They're actually, uh, looks like they're retreating a little bit. Yeah, retreating back from this uh, slope over here. But they were having a lot of initial success with those archers. The yeah, goblin heavy archers and, uh, and some swords. They're retreating in the sight of the uh, half orc axes there of Isengard. They are fleeing. Oh, I spoke to so. They turn around and face the foes that have been hounding them. Cut them down, boys. Cut them down. 
I guess it's like in some weird world that like maybe like, you know, obviously evil one. And then they're like fighting amongst each other. Maybe like the goblins allied we are with Mordor and like, or maybe it was a Mordor civil war. It's really hard to like make up some weird scenario for this. My best scenario was, I think, Isengard wins at Hell's Deep and uh, the elves betrayed Rohan and joined them. That's the best scenario I have. And Mordor's just on both sides. They're just in some split personality. Um, but yeah, like the counteroffensive here by we have Morgul Raiders and half -hook Axes. Shocking tree here, pushing back against these uh, goblins, causing a real problem. Like the goblins are pretty solid, but shocking tree just is just got that knack of carving through units. Oh, and here we go. The trolls are arriving. The old high wants to get involved in the fight. Smack them down, boys! Smack down these little goblins. Squash the bugs. Yeah, they're doing their bit. Slapping them about. That's going to just confirm the victory there. They're going to need pole arms or something like the Spear Warriors here. Get them in. Tie them uh, up against the trolls. The and instead, they're getting Good shot news. for free right now by um, some Urukai archers. And we are seeing more pole arms shift in this direction, which they are also needed because the uh, Urks of Isengard here are making a counteroffensive with the support of Mordor pole arms. Mordor Legion doing their bit. Urukai infantry should overwhelm the goblins, I'd imagine. Yeah. The goblin blade warriors are dying. The pole arms are arriving, but whether they'll be able to stabilize that front, we'll see. Uh, Gondor does seem like he's making some progress, but I don't know if it's enough. Also, find the elves is just always frustrating. They're just tough. All their units fight just longer and harder than most of the races. So Gondor's got a pretty good and professional army. You know, if you want anyone to try and break this nut, it's going to be Gondor out of the three options. The enemy have rallied their units. There we go. And, uh, I mean, it looks like uh, it looks like the elves. Oh yeah, they're making a bit of a counteroffensive. Have we seen elven cavalry? Yeah, Lorien outriders. An interesting choice to bring by the elves. I would have just brought maybe another cheap infantry unit, to be honest, which are pretty solid. But they're charging them in, doing some serious damage to Uruk bodyguards here. Are Lorien outriders all of a sudden just like insane? Surely not. They are like back. They are like bouncing around. They've gone past this um, trebuchet here. They're pulling through it a little bit. I mean, they could just finish it off. It's just a trebuchet that you go dealt with. Now they can just bounce around a little bit more if they wanted to. And yeah, it looks like uh, they're actually making it a push here. We've got Mordor fighting Mordor. A Mordor civil war. This is terrible for Sauron. His legions have rebelled against each other. I'm going to see, it looks like more Gondor Cav here yeah, coming in. That's going to try and scare off the Lorien Outriders, which are getting some chevrons. I don't think they start with silver chevrons. I think they've earned some of those. That's impressive. Um, but yeah, I mean, the most healthy, I think, army left is probably this attacking Mordor army, which has also brought a lot of servants to the eye. Oh my gosh, they brought a lot. Yeah, three units and then the Witch King. That seems like overkill. I mean... Edoras is not the easiest settlements to use cavalry, especially as you get further up the settlement. Um, I mean, what's re left in reserve? Berserkers, Iron Stormers. But yeah, it, I guess you can use it in the lower levels, but I don't think this is that, like, that was too much cav to use or to bring, I think. And you can see here, the uh, goblins are getting routed. They're getting sent pack in the Goblin King and some Blade Warriors are all that remain as uh, we have Mordor there sending their, uh, their trolls down to support the uh, Uruks of Isengard over here. And that was really well done. They've knocked them out. They've got rid of them. Now they can turn around and face the other two enemies. It's kind of turned into a 3v2. As you can see the balance power us. now in favor of the defenders. Never a good sign if you're an attacker. Numbers are also with the uh, with the defenders. And they have the uh, the elves on their side, which have smaller units. That is a concern.
Colin are bringing forward more reinforcements. They've got to get a breakthrough soon before, you know, these d defenders over here can turn around and sort of stabilize the front. Servants of the Eye trying to prove their worth now. Oh, how oh, they're pulling all the way through. No, 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 you do not want to do that. Pulling all the way through. These are uh, Lorian Outriders and Gladrum Swords. Yeah, that's cost going to cost them. They're going to rear charge the swords over here. They should not really have done that. Looks like, yeah, they're going to try and rear charge those units. They got to charge themselves by the Outriders here. Punishing them for that pull through. Where the Outriders going to try and pull out themselves? It looks like they might. It's cost them units as well. They might be better to stay in that fight. Uh, I see why they're pulling back. There's more cav on the way. It's turning into a bit of a cav off on this flank here. There are plenty of uh, archers with ammo as well, which is good for, for Mordor. They're going to need that ammo. If they can bait the defenders into a spot where they can't really defend properly, keep focusing them down, that'd be excellent. I don't think they will. There's not many great spots. You could set up your archers here and then shoot into this but a choke point. That would open it up. Do some work. The old rivals, Gondor and Mordor, fighting again. Classic duo stuff and it actually looks like they're going to fall back some of these pole arms anyway they don't really like them just being stood here i don't really like putting pole arms and swords into um into choke points before the enemy's even there i mean it looks like gondor was about to go for a charge he might still the mad lad he might just go for it i don't like that the cabs stood there as well but, i mean um, it's fine to have it there as long as he doesn't charge i just feel like he just kind of Rode up all the way there. There's no need to get that close. But um, maybe he's just thinking, oh, I can go for a charge if that pike pulls back. The enemy but yeah, I'm more of a fan of keep putting the pikes and the pole arms into the choke point rather lives. than having them there initially. Because then archers could be used elsewhere, might be used elsewhere. And then you might be able to sneak in a pole arm or a pike and just win a fight. I mean, everyone's got their different styles. And I don't think it really makes too much difference. I just don't like the archers just coming up and start shooting my pikes immediately. I'd rather they try and uh, maybe waste ammo and just swords or something or something else and have the pikes and pole arms fresh and healthy at the end yeah it's looking worse and worse for the attackers now since obviously these reinforcements are arriving uh, Gondor still making some pros Goblins have re uh, reorganized some of their troops and going to look like support Gondor but they haven't got much left in the way of ammo or men Heroes of Amon Lank down here as well. So Gondor's about to face some of the toughest elves around. And look like trolls are on the way as well. Oh, look, Hiving sent this way. Yeah, Archer's getting sliced and diced right now by Galadrim Swords. Not a good way to go. There you go, and they can move on to the next unit. I honestly would. I wouldn't slow down if I was an elf. Just keep going in. The moment you slow down, they just start to shoot you. Here we go. Gonna go slamming into that next unit. Carve open these uh, shields. Do what you can. Take their heads. Yes. There you go. They're gonna pull back. They're gonna cross this into two troops, but uh, yeah, they're falling back to allow the trolls to come forward here. And that is not a bad idea. Let the trolls get some sort of charge bonus. That might have worked. There you go. It looks like the trolls are pulling through. I don't know if that's a smart idea. Or maybe the gondol's pulling through to get to the elves. Ah, uh, the trolls go to try and silence the archers. They are. There you go. Fair enough. Elves, keep fighting. Slice and dice these boys. There you go, yep. The trolls going in. They're trying to size Boromir's in there as well. He's trying to, you know, I don't know, get rid of these trolls. I don't know what they're doing, really. Just kind of, like, charge all the way through. Yeah, Boromir's losing some troops over here. 
I think uh, if they can get these archers and try and silence them, then they've got a good chance of just getting Boromir as well. Uh, because the only real danger here to the trolls is the archers. Even then, archers take a, long, a lot of ammo to try and kill Olakai especially. There you go, they're slapping these Gondorians about. Bapping boys, bapping. Yeah, the Gondor archers running at any opportunity. When as soon as one unit engages, uh, the Olakai, the archers like, let's get the hell out of here. We'll start firing again. And then the uh, trolls kind of chase them. But I don't know if they'll be able to now. There's a lot of Gondorians surrounding these guys. They might have to fight their way through this. So the uh, veterans of Australia, if they've seen a troll or two in their time serving on the front lines of Australia, they aren't going to be scared of these guys. These armored war beasts. Yeah, they're really stacking up the archers, ready to just absolutely execute that, uh, that troll there. Um, but yeah, it doesn't seem like much of a breakthrough is going on here. It looks like it might eventually break through this front line here, which is just really made up of Lorian, Lorian sentries and Uruk throng. It's not really got anything else here. And the other choke point is not looking good for the attackers. They're sending in sword infantry and cavalry against Pike. That's definitely not a good idea. Pike could really do a shifting forward. The Wyand Stormers are like they've kind of advanced a little too far. Or we can get unsupported. Every units have rallied and returned to the battle. That front line, you can see, yeah, now the storm is kind of getting overwhelmed as they get pulled back and the pikes can get back to poking away there. Doing their bit. It's very nicely done there by the play, even if it costs you a few a few troops. A Lorian Outriders again causing some chaos. They're gonna sneak around these Goblin Spearers. I like how they just was like, ah, we can't. We're, we're not long enough to stretch out and stop you from getting around us. And I actually might route that uh, Goblin Spear Warrior. That's hilarious. They're really, I think they're off to the Goblin King. Yep, they are. They're gonna go and try and get him. There you go. Good charge. Don't think they'll kill him. Like I said, Me uh, Melee Cavalry got the greatest sort of charge bonus bit. Who knows, these Lauren Outriders seem like they're doing absolute work right now. They're killing everything. I'm gonna charge into the, part the spears there. They uh, might get routed here themselves, but they might take the Spear Warriors with them. And uh, yeah, there you go, they go routed. And the Spear Warriors, oh, they stayed. That's an unfortunate. Um, it looks like the trolls are actually winning their fight as well. They're killing off these Gondor swords. It's incredible to see. They're gonna take all these Gondor Gondorians down with them. If so, it shows the strength of all Kai. If not, like, not. If these guys aren't, like, supported Gondor Swords, like, by Javis or Archers, they're gonna get messed up by all Kai. And you saw, like, your classic Gondorian mortal scenarios we do. You're gonna see that quite a bit. Gondorians being flung around by all Kai, especially. If we don't see uh, any support for them. Yeah, Boromir's gonna have to sort this out somehow. Looks like he's winning, actually. He's winning his combat. The trolls are still winning though theirs. And they've lost trolls though now. They are dying. So maybe just over time they will start to kill um, kill these guys off. It looks like Heroes of Ammon Lank, yeah, they're, they're burning through these uh, Gondorian swords. It's gonna be an easy fight for them. A really good speed and with good melee attack. And a badass sword on their back, which they don't use. That would be something I'd like to see, but it might be just be one too far. Like one too one thing too far for total war would be like to see like a spear getting broken and then like that, that model that guy bringing out um, bringing out his sword and using that just like it just show like the damage that's done during battles it'd be quite cool to see might be something that's just too far for uh, total war or maybe just gaming generally just to see like units like maybe swords break or I don't know like I said spears break shields shatter or just like get damaged and these units are like fought for a long time in combat, like have really bad, banged up uh, like armor and weaponry. It would be awesome to see. I don't think it's possible to do really. It would be a cool thing to see, like more realistic or like damage is done in the battle. I know they have like blood and gore. So you see like units getting like, like more bloody because they've been in action, but like the damage done to them would be quite cool. Their unit forms are still like, not pristine, but like, you know, unfazed, some damage. That'd be cool to see. 
Morgul Legionnaire. They'll have no trouble with these Pelican Marines. I hope that they use all their ammo. I don't even check. They have. At least Gondor's been doing that. I feel like Pelican Marines have, just be, have either been nerfed or uh, just people aren't using them correctly recently. I feel like they just do not get kills like they used to. They're not as dangerous. Or people just know that they're a big threat and you start ki killing them off as soon as they see them, which is also possible. Oh, look, I here are still drawing in more and more Gondorians and Goblins now into that fight. It's incredible. Uh, Isengard on this side here. Yeah, seems like he's doing all right. We've got Uruk Archers that are coming point blank range. They're going to start blasting that Urukai pike line. I don't know if they'll be, have any luck. The um, bows here, the bow rabble could also just shoot them and just uh, silence these archers or at least try to. But there are quite a lot of Uruk Archers left, actually. Like I said, Mordor has the best chance of breaking through if he's going to. I think he's brought too much cav. I don't know why he brought this much. Um, like I said, Eras is just not a very cab friendly map as, a, as an attacker. And if you're using it on the defense, like inside, that's not much good better either. Starting out's fine. That's about it. Keep slapping them about, boys. Boromir is down at 53 men. The veterans are struggling, it seems. Even they can't stop those trolls. And, uh, yeah, I mean, the heroes of Avon Lank, they need to try and get through and support their troll allies, which I thought I'd never ever say. Lothlorien supporting Mordor. Just doesn't seem right. Just doesn't seem right. Enemies for centuries, millennia even. Now they've joined side. Ah. Seem right, and there you go. Are they oh, they're mass routing goblins. Oh, yeah, mass routing. So, wow, look at that. Are they, I mean, there's healthy units in the 81 Goblin King, the Goblin Archers. I could understand why they break, but yeah, that is a, that's unfortunate. There, the final Orc High fighting on, he's got a silver chevron for his, his troubles. Smack him about, boys. There you go, yeah, Boromir looks like he's uh, he's probably going to slay this Olokai eventually. Eventually. But it does look like the defenders are going to win this one. They are kicking out Gondor slowly. It's only a matter of time until uh, Mordor has to throw the dice and go for it. He already looks like he is here. And Gondor's here as well. Gondor threw troops over here as well. This is the problem. I feel like splitting your force sometimes works and sometimes it's not. And I feel like that's been a problem for Gondor today. They had troops everywhere. They had trebuchet helping other armies. That seemed like a silly idea. So yeah, the pipeline here of the Oryx, they'll have no trouble getting through these uh, Gondorians. I hope you guys have enjoyed the siege. It's certainly been a fun one to watch. Trolls have done very well in this one, I have a sense. Certainly the Olokai. I'm not so sure about the mountain trolls. I feel like um, they might have struggled a little bit. But uh, I think they could have do with, like, like I said, just having an extra couple of, uh, of like, maybe just have 10 at any unit. I still think that I'd like to see that happen. Um, just to try and, like, if they're trained, um, usually, like, you know, trained units have more men in them than elite units. And these Olokai are elite, and they have eight. And yet the Mountain Trolls are trained, and they have eight as well. It's just, it doesn't really follow the old formula. Oh, Haldir and his twins, his multiple twins are down here. It's sad if they lose one, you know, one of the family members. It would be very upsetting, especially for, like, you know, Thanksgiving and Christmas. Just seeing, you know, some of the boys did not make it back from war. There you go, they mass routed um, Gondor Boromir is running back to Osgiliath. Taking his veterans with him, and then it just leaves one. Uh, I think it is just Mordor. Yeah, Gondor's infantry that was over here as well as mass routing. Yeah, Rook Spear is being forced to try and break through the spear line. It's not going to happen. Guards the teeth here. This is an an a better answer, but I don't think they have the range to compete with the height. 
think they can do it. We'll see if they can do it. My bet is uh, that they won't. And I think we're going to see a defender's victory, which I haven't seen in a little while. I feel like, I feel like you always see the attackers roll over the defenders, but the attackers... Yeah, they made a few defeat. mistakes. They I think, um, I certainly think maybe, I don't know, they all attacked on one different different point. Edras is a hard one to attack. I don't always find attacking this spot very uh, appealing. I feel like you can kind of get bogged down, and Gondor certainly kind of did uh, get bogged down here. I certainly think this is the best front to attack over here where the goblins uh, attacked. Um, I just, I'm, this side's not easy either. And also Mordor kind of just attacked through one choke point. Um, in the end, they landed the, the city tower. Whether it got bugged, I don't know, or whether it's um, well, they just decided not to use it again. But they only, yeah, they didn't really land much stuff here. They didn't bring many towers. Well, they did actually. They brought loads. They didn't use them. What are they doing? Is there a unit stuck on this? Oh, there is a whole unit I think stuck on here. Men are breaking up. That is unfortunate as well. There's like a whole unit of uh, spears like stuck here on that wall. Like a, a good majority of a unit there. It might be this, uh, this uh, is, it's this unit here, so we've got, yeah, these two u weakened units, and they're stuck there. That's unfortunate. Um, but yeah, I may, that might have also damaged them. So the trebuchets obviously, like, require quite a lot. Ah, uh, that's why Gondol spends so much money on, uh, his, on, like, had so little money for its army. It had three trebuchets. Incredible. Um, yeah, that seems like a lot of money to be spending on trebuchets, and uh, I bet they haven't got many kills. They just made breaches. Looks like, yeah, with a minute or so left, the last throw of the dice is going in. We've seen the Witch King being sent in. His bodyguard facing off against Pikes. And Uruk's bodyguard and the heroes of Amon Lank. They're throwing everything now at the defenders. I mean, we haven't even seen, like, the Berserkers get any kills. They've not even seen any action, I don't think. At least those ones haven't. Maybe that one down there. That's not even a Berserker either. Yeah, I don't think any of the Berserkers got used, or if they have, they, oh, no, they have. One's got lost eight men combat here. Yeah, the Berserk is basically our action. Like, this is a very, very good defensive by the defenders. The attackers, I think, is just poorly organized and poorly spent their money. Like, on trebuchets. They bring more siege towers. It's a good way to get it. Maybe one trebuchet, but it's a, it's a hard settlement, really, to try and make that benefit. Unless you're going to burn the city down, which I guess is one option, but that doesn't really... Settlement damage, I don't think, is a big thing in Golden Stays, as much as it is in, like, 12-12. There you go. The Witch King has died. That's probably going to cause a mass drought as there's only, what, well, yeah, 500 against 2,000. Yeah, you imagine see some of these less units start to break, like the Uruk Archers. Guards of Teeth might hold on a little bit longer. Oh, maybe not. 101 and wavering. Yeah, I think it's just a little too much for them here today. And we're going to see a defender victory and a victory for Mordor. But was a defeat for Mordor in this civil war? There you go. We'll end the replay and have a quick look at the end results. This was uh, sent in from a uh, sip of Sunscorch, who was playing as um, as one of the Mordor armies, the defending Mordor army. Uh, he got some great kills as Olokai. 386 kills, 177 there. We have 276 kills with the Morgul Raiders, 170 kills with the Morgul Legion. O Orc Bow Rabble, 128 kills, 128 kills there. Um, and then we got Uruk Throng at 86 kills. Yeah, Orc Pillage 109 did well. Then we have Lol Watt playing as Lothlorien, 155 kills with Haldir here. Uh, Amros Sentinels 268, 136 kills. 150 kills with the Gladrim Sword Warriors, 291 with another one there. 254 kills, very good kills. There's Shock. Um, Spears getting 119 kills and pretty untouched. It's Archers getting 160 kills. Uh, 299 kills this Lorien Outrider. Incredible. One of the uh, uh, MVPs of the game, I've got to say. Then we have uh, Shaddix here playing as Isengard with very healthy um, Berserker Core left at the end there. 
Pike's getting 288 kills is very solid. One of his Uruk infantry getting 184 kills. 174 kills with the White and Stormers. 207 kills with the Half Orc Axes. 214 with another there. And then his Archers, 142 kills. Then we have Mr. Carmine playing as Goblins, getting 126 kills with one of his Blade Warriors here. 183 with another one. And the Mordor Uruk's getting 179 kills. 224 kills with the heavy archers, 174, uh, 71, 175 kills, 199. The archers did very well, actually, for the goblins. One of the trolls did get 279 kills, but the others, yeah, only 52 kills. Then we have Levi playing as uh, Mordor, getting 99 kills here with one of his Uruk Throng, 115 with another. The bodyguards only getting 95 kills. One of the guards of the teeth did get 146 kills. His archers, 160 kills. But yeah, all this cav, the best one got 90 kills, but I think it's uh, poor use of. Uh, of money there. I feel like maybe one uh, extra would have been fine with the Witch King. You would have been fine. I think no, there weren't really any dangers of being sallied out with the uh, factions being brought. Or major sally outs anyway. Uh, Achilles here playing as uh, Gondor. We have 158 kills with his Pelagir Marines. 181 kills. They actually did pretty well. They got some good kills. So I take it back. Maybe they were used pretty well. Um, Boromir only getting 10 kills. Oof. I mean, he was fighting trolls, so I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Gondor Swords, 129 kills, outscored by the Marines. Uh, Warriors Losnark doing pretty well, 159 kills, killing off those pillagers. Uh, Archers, 136 kills, 147, and Cav, 122 kills. Then the Trebuchets actually did get a lot of kills, um, so maybe worth bringing. 291, 181 kills, 183. But whether he'd be better off bringing some pole arms, you know, for later game, I think three trebuchets was a little bit over the top but that's just my opinion but anyway guys there you go uh, i hope you did enjoy the siege let me know about your opinions on some of those tactics i'll be interested to know what you think and uh, yeah do remember to leave a like subscribe comment all that shenanigans feel free to hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any streams or any uh videos and then see you guys in the next dawnless days street and um, stream or siege bye for now